Hello and welcome to the Ecology Notes. You have gone through the hardest part of biology and we are getting to the end. So this is going to be our last unit. It's going to be energy flow in the ecosystems. And basically what this unit does is it explains how energy is transferred from one organism to the next um, and then how those organisms are grouped together and to show that energy flow in the ecosystem. So let's get started. So our first vocab term will be primary productivity. And what this is, is the rate at which organic material is produced. Well, you might say to yourself, well, what does organic material mean? Is that apples? Is that organic blueberries? That's different. So organic in chemistry and in biology is considered anything that contains carbon. So the organic material we're talking about here is glucose, sucrose, any type of sugar that is created from photosynthesis. So it's that rate at which those organic materials are produced. This is going to determine the amount of energy that's available in an ecosystem. So where does all energy come from uh, in our food chain? All the energy comes from the sun, right? And our sun is our main source of energy. The rate at which the organisms can take that sunlight and convert it or, or carbon fix it into glucose is going to be that primary productivity. And the faster that rate is, the more energy that's available in an ecosystem and the bigger the ecosystem can be. So there are two types of organisms that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about producers and we're going to talk about consumers. Producers are organisms that first capture energy. These are going to be your autotrophs. They're going to be plants, bacteria, and algae, and they're going to go through photosynthesis to convert that sunlight into glucose or sucrose or some sort of sugar. Uh, consumers is the other type of organism we're going to talk about, and they are all other types of organisms. These are going to be your heterotrophs. They're going to be anything that has to eat in order to obtain energy. When we talk about energy transfer in ecosystems, we obviously have to bring up trophic levels. And what trophic levels are, these are going to be your levels um, in your food chain or food web. So the energy is going to be lost as you go from the very first level to the last level. And we'll talk about later, that later on in detail. Um, but you're going to have your first level, second, third, fourth, and we very rarely meet that fifth level, which again, we'll talk about why that is. So this energy is going to move from the first level all the way to the fifth. So the first trophic level is going to be the primary producers, or just you can call them producers. These are going to be your autotrophs. These are going to be the things that are going to go through photosynthesis to help give us sugars. And then the second trophic level is going to eat that first trophic level. So the first trophic level or the lowest trophic level is your primary producer. The second trophic level is your primary consumers. And I know this can be kind of confusing because it's the second trophic level, so you would think it would be secondary consumers, but that's incorrect, okay? So they are the first consumer in the food chain, so we call them primary consumers. We had primary producers, and now we have primary consumers. So these primary consumers are going to be your herbivores. They're going to only eat plants and other primary producers. Uh, the reason why I put cellulose in here is because these primary produce, primary consumers can actually break down this thing called cellulose. And we've mentioned cellulose before. Cellulose is a complex carbohydrate found in the cell walls of plants. If you guys remember when we talked about the cell wall, that's got cellulose in it. Um, and not all animals can digest it. So we don't digest cellulose. This is considered fiber for us. It kind of keeps you regular, you know what I mean? Um, but these organisms, the ruminants, so by ruminants I mean cows, horses, goats, anything that eats grass, these guys can uh, digest the cellulose uh, because they have a special microorganism or bacteria in their stomachs that helps them break it down. So this is why we don't eat grass because we can't digest it. And it also probably doesn't taste very good. All right, so the third trophic level is going to be your secondary consumer. These are going to be the animals that are going to eat other animals. Uh, you can be carnivores, so anything that just eats meat, or omnivores, animals that can eat plants and animals. They're going to use simple sugars and starches stored in plants as food, but they can't digest cellulose. So again, those primary consumers are the ones that are going to digest cellulose. And if you look here, this kind of gives you an idea as to the energy that's available on each level and what organisms are at each level. So here we have our autotrophic level, our primary producers, which are trees and grass. Uh, and then the things that eat those are gonna be your primary consumers. So in this picture, they give you a cow and a rabbit, and then they give you the third trophic level in this case, which is um, the snake, and that would be a carnivore. 
and that's going to be your secondary consumer. So I'm going to skip um, tertiary for a second and kind of talk about detrivores. So detrivores uh, and decomposers, these are going to be the organisms that are going to release nutrients back into the environment. They're not really considered um, one of the trophic levels. So they're not considered a primary producer. They're not considered a primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer. And this is because they are going to be breaking down every trophic level. So I'm going to go back to slide four and you can kind of see this gives a good example of how detrivores and decomposers work is that they are going to decompose every trophic level. So we really don't consider them one of the specific trophic levels. They're like on their own level. So they're going to break down all the other animals and return those nutrients back to the environment. Moving on, we have tertiary consumers, and these are going to be your top carnivores. This is your fourth trophic level. Yes, it gets, get, gets confusing because tertiary technically means three, but they are the fourth trophic level. They are the third consumer in the food chain. Okay, so these are your top carnivores, a hawk that eats a snake. The ecosystems will very rarely contain more than four levels, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Here is a food web. So a lot of the times food chains aren't as accurate as we'd like them to be. So what we do is we group food chains together to create a food web because not all organisms only eat one other organism. A lot of them, you know, have a, a very diverse diet. So we like to kind of show that in a food web. So you can see here the arrows are going to point to where the energy is going. So you're going to point the arrows up on the food web. So you'll see here we have your primary producer, your primary consumer, secondary consumer, and your tertiary consumer. Okay, so there's your food web. Now, I know you all have been waiting for this, the loss of energy in a food chain. So you'll notice here, this is not a food chain, this is considered a food pyramid. And what it does is it accurately shows how much biomass or how much energy is in each trophic level you'll notice that the pyramid on the very bottom is huge, right? We have a ton of energy here, and then as it moves up, it gets smaller and smaller. Notice as well how many organisms are in each of these, on each of these levels. There's a ton of grass here, right? I have some, I think they're crickets, okay? And then I have rats, and I have a hawk. There's only a single hawk here compared to all this grass at the bottom. That's because as you move up the food chain, energy gets lost as heat. 90% of that energy gets lost. So you only conserve 10% of energy from one trophic level to the next. So that's why you have such large plant populations. And when you get up to tertiary consumers, there's not that many because at that point, there's not that much energy left for the ecosystem to be able to withhold or, or um, carry that number of organisms. So again, we lose 90% of that energy as heat Okay, when you break down food, you're going to release that energy as heat. The loss of energy limits the amount of trophic levels. So again, I think we mentioned earlier, it's very rare to get to that fifth trophic level. It is possible, but it's rare because there's not that much energy to be able to withstand or, with, or hold or carry that amount of organisms. So again, this is the energy pyramid. It kind of shows how much energy is in each level. I move from producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, and then tertiary consumers. And notice they get smaller as you go up. And then finally, biomass. This is the dry weight. That's my dog, Toby, by the way. He would be a, what would you be, Tobe? You would be a secondary consumer because he likes meat and vegetables, specifically carrots. Okay, sorry. That was a dog comment. So biomass is the dry weight of tissue and other organic matter found in an ecosystem. Each higher level on the pyramid contains about 10% of the biomass found in the trophic level below it. So this is kind of like is a um, energy pyramid and it just kind of shows the biomass or the amount of that organic matter found in each ecosystem. So it's basically like the population sizes. And now I have a larger population size down here with your primary producers and it gets smaller as you move to the top of the food chain. So this is your food chains and food webs notes and feel free to use this um, and the notes themselves to help answer the review questions that are going to be due on Thursday night. So uh, if you have any questions, reach out to me via Remind. Even if you just want to see my dog, Toby, I'm fine. I'll send you a picture of him. He's pretty awesome. Uh, and uh, just have a great weekend, guys, and have an awesome, Toby, shush, and have an awesome uh, Memorial Day weekend. See you guys.